Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Hannah. I post all things fashion, beauty, lifestyle related that are also vegan and cruelty free. I just posted my second trimester recap and in that video I mentioned I was going to be talking about my favorites. This ended up being a very long video, so I'm going to break it up into two. So this is going to be all of my pregnancy recommendations for the first and second trimester. Um, most of these I am now in my third trimester, so most of these I am also using right now. Let's get into it. One thing that helped me so much in the first trimester was nausea chews. Um, so there's a, a few different ones that I tried and I'll show you them. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I will link them in the description box down below. I know one is from Pink Stork and then the other one, I don't remember because it came in this like pregnancy box that my best friend got for me, um, which was so cute. And I ended up loving those. Um, those I liked the flavor a little bit more. I, Definitely like the pink stork one too and those you can suck on. The other ones were more chewable. So it just depends on like what you're looking for. Sometimes sucking on something when you're nauseous is nice. Um, but sometimes you're like, I can't even think about sucking on anything right now. So sometimes just, you know, chewing it and getting it over with to try to get through the nausea helps. Ginger chews, I loved in the first trimester. Oh my gosh, just, have you even just felt like a little wave of nauseousness? Chewing that would at least distract you from the nauseousness for the time being um, because they take so long to chew. I just got some from Trader Joe's. They're really chewy, they're big, and it would just kind of help me if I just felt like that kind of like nauseousness coming on. Um, another thing I enjoyed in the first trimester and definitely in the second trimester as well were protein bars. I actually got these um, protein bars from Lenny and Larry's. They're like a cookie the cookies and cream protein bar and they're just like the perfect size to just like have something quick and um especially in the first trimester when you're dealing with like nauseousness a lot of times it's just because you need to like eat something like i said in that video that i just felt like i was constantly eating because that's i was just trying to like keep the nauseousness away and so those protein bars were great um because they were just like really easy i was just trying to eat something that tasted good and like i could stomach during the first trimester so those were a great one another thing um in the first trimester and you guys know me i love skincare like i literally live for skincare it brings me joy i am the type of person who has a five step or more routine every morning and every night like on the dot i i love it like i just love it first trimester i mean like i said i was in bed after i got off work and then i would just be in bed taking a nap all night and then i would wake up for dinner and then i'd go back to bed so getting out of bed to do like a full skincare routine was just not gonna happen so i found that i really relied on sleep masks because i would put them on my bedside table and then like whenever i was just like feeling slightly normal i just roll over and like put on a sleep mask real quick so that at least i was getting like some sort of hydration um so there's one from derma e that i was using all the time there's one from derma e that i really really love and then there's another one from you to the people that i really really love so we just have those on my bedside table and alternate between the two one's a little more like jelly consistency more liquidy and one's a little more like of a thick cream so depending on your needs the derma is a little more jelly and the youth to the people is a little more of a thick cream depending on what you like or you could switch them off like me if you love skincare like me i just feel like that's a must and especially because your skin is so dry i feel like if i wasn't using those i would notice a difference in my skin the next day like i would like notice i was be like breaking out more or my skin would be dry so that was definitely a lifesaver in the first trimester. Okay, so let's talk pregnancy pillows because you're gonna need these your entire pregnancy. And it's like crucial. And I remember being like, you know, when I first got pregnant, I was so excited. I was like doing all this research, trying to find the best pregnancy pillow. And I feel like I nailed it with the help of advice from all of my friends who have done this before. So one of my friends mentioned like a wedge pillow. Beginning of the second trimester was when I started to get like a little bit of a bump. Like at 14 weeks, I had a, I had a baby bump. Like you could kind of tell that I was pregnant. Um, at the same time, I am 5'3". So, and I'm not only 5'3", I'm 5'3 with a short torso. Like literally the space between my ribs and my hips is like, like a few inches. So naturally, my baby bump is just going to protrude straight out and look large because 
I don't have a lot of height to work with. So you'll notice like if you're tall or your friends who are tall, they have like a little less noticeable bumps um, or they'll, they'll just seem like a little bit more like um, elongated, whereas mine looks like a straight up beach ball. So once you start to get to that point where the bump is like getting out to that point, like it's, it's gone as vertical as it can and now it must, must go outwards, you will want a pregnancy pillow. The wedge pillow was amazing because first of all, it keeps you from rolling on your back, which I, which you're not supposed to be sleeping on your back after like, I forget how many weeks, ask your doctor. There's a certain number of weeks where you're not supposed to be sleeping on your back. Um, I think it's mostly in the second trimester though. But you might as well start practicing in your first trimester because you're never gonna be able to sleep on your back the entire rest of your pregnancy. Th that is nice about it because it just like, you're, you're always gonna be a little bit on an incline if you do roll over on your back. And that space between where the belly is and your like spine, I guess, like your side is like, there's a pillow there to kind of cushion it and fill that gap so it doesn't feel like weird, like there's just air in between the bump and the bed, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Just trust me. It was a great purchase for, you know, late first trimester, all of second trimester. And then in the middle of my second trimester, I started to realize I like hate the feeling of my knees touching. And I'm sure there's some science to it about like the extra weight or something, but just i was just very aware of like my knees touching each other and my ankles touching each other so i really felt like i needed something like in between that um to kind of like spread the hips out and just relieve some of that pressure so i got the pillow from bb hug me um first of all it's so cute and that was a big thing for me i know it's like silly but I'm a Taurus Libra rising, so we have a lot of Venusian energy here, and I care about aesthetics. So for me, I wanted something that would look cute on the bed, and a lot of the pillows are very bulky. They take up a lot of space. We have a queen-size bed that we share with our Chihuahua um, because Archie likes to sleep on the floor. He's, he gets hot, so he likes to sleep on the floor. But Zoe sleeps in between us in a queen-size bed, and it is just not... <laughs> is not conducive for a like double-sided huge pregnancy pillow. Um, so I love the BB Hug Me because it's one that you can just like wrap your body around. Like it, you almost feel like you're like a sloth on a tree. You just like hug it like that, put your knees in between it, wrap your arms around it. And then as you switch side to side, you can just kind of like bring it with you and it just takes up way less space in the bed. And then when I'm not using it, I just kind of use it as like a little bolster pillow on the bed and it looks cute. Like honestly, I would probably buy a pillow like that. And so I really like it a lot. And I actually think I'll probably continue to use it after giving birth because I just find that it helps you sleep so much better. So definitely recommend that pillow. And like I said, you probably wouldn't need that one until you get a little bit later in your pregnancy. Um, but right now, most of my second trimester, I used both. I, and still to this day, I use both. And I mean, I, I could probably even add more <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, but like I said, we really just don't have room on that queen size bed. You could probably concoct some sort of pillow situation, and especially if your big bed is bigger than mine, you can probably like just stack up like regular pillows to kind of like do the same thing. But I, I really like these and I, they've definitely gotten their money's worth. I will say. So my next thing that I've really enjoyed is I got a pregnancy diary. Um, so I just ordered one off of Amazon. Honestly, I don't like, I'm not like saying that you have to get this one because I'm sure there's probably better ones out there. Like it's good. You know, it asks me questions. I would say it's a little repetitive. Like every single month, it's like three months, three words to describe pregnancy. And I'm like, I already, I'm running out of words. By the seventh month, I'm like, I don't know what words are anymore. I've run out of words to describe what pregnancy is. <laughs> like my poor baby one day will read this book and be like, mom, what? Like these were weird words. And I'll just be like, I don't know. I was trying to, to have like unique words. It's like a little repetitive, but you know, look around, see if you find some that like the questions gel with you. What I liked about this one was that it asked like a lot of open-ended questions and I really just wanted to be able to like write freely from the heart to my baby 
about my pregnancy journey with them so that one day when they're older they can like read it and be like wow this is like when my mom was growing me this is what she was thinking this is what she was feeling this is how she told people like all the little like events that happened during pregnancy and I feel like if I you know am to be pregnant again in the future it'll be fun to look back on and kind of compare the two like oh wow I was like this around this time with this pregnancy and it was different with this one and I don't know it's just been fun. It's been harder to keep up the more pregnant I get because I'm just like, oh my God, time is flying by and I literally don't know what month it is. Um, so I would suggest getting one of those and I would suggest doing a calendar reminder to write your, your little journal entries. And to add on to that, I would say take bump photos and if you're bad at remembering to take photos, set a calendar reminder because I had in my head, I was like, I'm gonna take weekly photos and i'm gonna have 40 weeks of photos of my bump transition no that did not happen at all um <laughs> i honestly feel like i've not taken enough photos of my bump even somebody was telling me they're like wait you literally went from not pregnant to pregnant <laughs> i'm like yeah i really just like did not take many pictures so Take a lot of pictures, set calendar reminders. You will want to look back on them. You will want to look back and be like, oh my God, I was so little, but I thought I was big and like just things like that. So do that. Don't be like me. I need to take my own advice. Water bottle. You need a water bottle. Right when I got pregnant, I was like, I'm going to see what this Stanley Tumblr business is all about. If you're on TikTok, if you follow any Utah mom bloggers, I don't even follow that many. And I feel like all I see are these stupid Stanley tumblers. So this is my second one. <laughs> I just got it. So this one just came in the mail. And they've, they're have they new and improved, which is why I got another one. Also because Jesse steals mine all the time. Um, even though I bought him his own, he leaves it at his office and he steals mine. So I got another one. Um, this one has like a cushioned handle. And it also prevents leaks. So that would be like the one thing I would say is like the negative about the Stanley tumblers. Um, but if you get the new and approved one, you won't have that. I ordered it in the first trimester because I realized like how much water I'm gonna need to drink. And that is like one of the main things. Every single doctor's appointment, they're like, drink water, drink water, drink water. If you feel nauseous, drink water. If you feel dizzy, drink water. If you have a headache, drink water. And just like, you have to drink a lot of water while you're pregnant, you really do. Um, and you'll want to, most likely. I got that and it has been one of my favorite purchases of the year. I literally take it everywhere with me. I have a reusable cup video on my channel. It weirdly has done like really well and gotten a lot of traction. Um, so you can watch that if you're interested. That video will give you some perspective on how many reusable cups I've tried. So I've tried the Hydro Flask, I've tried the Yeti, I've tried the Simple Modern, I've tried, you know, honestly, if you can think of one, I've probably tried it. Um, what I love about this cup that those cups don't have is I was looking for something that was big, as big as my Hydro Flask, because that ended up being kind of my everyday water bottle that I would use. The other ones I would kind of use for like coffee or like tea or just like other drinks that I would take on the go. Um, but as for water, like my Hydro Flask kind of became my go-to. But my biggest gripe about that is that it's so wide that it wouldn't fit in the cup holder. And I even bought like little cup holder like resizers to try to like figure that out and it would still tip over when I was driving and it honestly just kind of felt like a hazard like I just always was afraid it was gonna like roll over and like roll in, un under the like pedal or something also I would always drop it because it's so heavy I mean 40 ounces of water is a lot of I think it was actually 32 ounces so this is 40 so this one holds more water um, and then I would always drop it because there's no handle and then it would always get dented, which is annoying. And I've never dropped a Stanley, knock on wood. Where's wood? I don't have any wood in this house. Oh, the floor. Um, so I would always drop it, so I love this. Um, and like the biggest complaint I would say people have with the Stanley was that like it would leak and now they've fixed that. So I don't know, I see the hype, I love it. The thing about being pregnant and drinking water is I used to be a room temperature water kind of girl and I can no longer do room temperature water. It's just like disgusting to me. Like I could not bring myself to drink it. <laughs> just like so stupid. But like I need ice, ice, ice cold water all the time. So the Stanley keeps it cold literally over 24 hours. Let's talk fashion. I post a lot about fashion. So I've been getting a lot of fashion questions. Understandably so. 
um, like what am I wearing? What's, you know, what do I recommend? My wardrobe had already had like a lot of like pregnancy friendly outfits. I've always been someone who loves dresses and not very tight dresses. So those have always been like really conducive to like the bump. And I found that I haven't really had to buy a ton of pregnancy clothing. I definitely did order some pregnancy clothing. So I got some from Pink Blush Maternity, which is a boutique. And what I liked about that boutique is that a lot of the dresses are dresses that you can wear when you're not pregnant too. So I'm like, anything that I can buy that I will still wear not pregnant is a win for me because it just feels, you know, of course there are certain things like you have to get maternity, but if I can avoid it, like I just would like to and just kind of like simplify what I get that is maternity, just so I'm not being wasteful and just, you know, so I don't have a closet full of maternity clothes that I will only wear while pregnant. I got a few dresses from them that I really liked. I got a pair of like jean, short jean maternity shorts, which have been great. I really feel like you only need one pair. Um, I haven't worn them as much as I thought I would, but they're really nice to have, especially in the summer, if you're pregnant in the summer. Um, and I am now, it's now getting to be winter. So I think I probably will order at least one pair of maternity jeans from them just because I think we're gonna start to get a little bit of cooler weather here. So I might want to be wearing pants from time to time. And then I did also order some stuff from Hatch, which is a maternity brand. So I got some overalls, I got a really cute dress that I got because I had like a couple weddings and like charity events and things where I needed to be dressy for. So I love the dress. I also like am very curious to see how it looks when I'm not pregnant. I feel like it's still going to be cute. So we'll see. I also got a like two piece set. It's like a black crop top and black skirt, which has been amazing because it's super versatile. I've been able to like mix and match those pieces and wear them with different things. You can wear the top with different skirts um, and then the skirt you can wear obviously with like different tops. Like I just love that midi pencil skirt look. And then I also got a pair of overalls, which were definitely like a little more indulgent, but I really like, I love overalls. I'm an overall girl and I feel like I'm gonna wear them well into like these transitional months into fall. Yeah, it's been cute to like be able to like wear jeans and feel like, oh, I don't have to wear a dress every single day. Cause I would say for the most part, I wear dresses. Anything that's like loose or flowy and has that kind of like cinched material at the top that's stretchy because you're not gonna want a zipper. Don't even buy anything with a zipper. Don't do it, unless it's maternity. Don't buy it. And then things like what I'm wearing right now, which is like tight, kind of stretchy dresses, um, have been really great because I feel like they just, the nice thing about the stretchier dresses is that it, like you can visibly tell that you're pregnant. Whereas um, with the more flowy things, sometimes like it's, it just depends on like where you're at in your pregnancy, but there would be days where I'm like, I kind of look like a tent. Like it just doesn't, it's not like as like flattering as I would have wanted it to be. So the tight things I really gravitate towards and again, like it's something that like, this is not maternity. This is from Princess Polly. Um, so this is something that I will be able to wear after pregnancy as well. So I basically, anything that's like tight um, and not maternity, I've been sizing up for one size and that's served me really well. So I would say like, you're pretty safe to do that. And I'm very happy with this decision. I would say invest in a few quality maternity pieces. Like again, if you have to go to a wedding or something um, or you have a formal event to go to, it might be nice to get like one nice maternity dress. The overalls or jeans are great. Um, just one pair. Get things that you can like mix and match. And then everything else, like you can get away with like the stretchy, you know, things. If you're comfortable in that, of course. I pretty much wear that. If it's more casual, I'm gonna be wearing biker shorts and an oversized t-shirt. So I have these biker shorts from Amazon that I absolutely love. I highly, highly recommend. They also make them in a legging version. And I would also recommend getting the legging version as well. Um, my sister-in-law gifted me the Beyond Yoga maternity leggings. And let me tell you, 
Those are lush. I would say if you're looking for a save option, get the Amazon version. Um, but if you are looking for, if you're like, I wear leggings all the time, all day, every day. If you work out a lot, um, if you just like to wear them at home, worth the splurge. I wear those things all the time. <laughs> in fact, it's so annoying because they're always dirty because I wear them so much. And I'm like, they're always in the wash when I want them. Definitely recommend getting those. They're buttery soft, they're lightweight, they're super flattering, they're so comfortable. I mean, I'm gonna wear those probably postpartum as well. So definitely just like such a good investment. The other thing I will say is undergarments are something that you're gonna wanna like probably get new ones for. So for me, it's like as I've started to get bigger, like any underwear that's like tight around the hips, it like it will literally cut into you and it's so uncomfortable. So I would focus on things that have like a very comfortable band. And I don't think you necessarily have to get maternity underwear. I've gotten both. Like I wear my maternity underwear and then I also have like some underwear from Aerie that is just like comfy cotton underwear. And I feel like that's also like totally fine. Just as long as it's like riding low, you're not gonna want anything like high-waisted. Anything that rides low and is like soft and stretchy will be your best friend. So definitely something to think about. And then like bras, I, I'm not, I'm so stubborn. <laughs> I'm not going to buy like a brand new bra. Um, your, your melons will grow. It's just inevitable. You will need new bras. You are not going to fit in your old bras kiss your bras goodbye for a while me personally i don't even like wired bras that much anyways so i'm not going to invest in like a bigger one just to like have my like breast change size again because of course they'll probably change like three more times after this um so for me not worth it i got just a bunch of bralettes like i got some from anthropology i got some tube top ones from amazon that i'm wearing that one right now which you can kind of tell like it cuts in a little bit but um but I really like it because it's just like easy to wear under dresses and it's comfortable one thing now that I am in my third trimester I think I'm going to look at our like nursing bras to get um just because I feel like I'm gonna want them um and might as well just like start wearing them now so that is something that I'm thinking about as well so maybe you just want to get those instead and save yourself the money but i knew that i would wear like these bralettes and like tube top things like i know i'll wear those long after pregnancy as well so for me it was worth it to go ahead and get those the next thing i would recommend is a belly oil or like a cream for your belly stretch marks there's just like so much out there that's like are they genetic are they not so i i feel like no one really knows I personally just love skincare for my face in general, so why would I not apply that to like my body, especially a part of my body that's like changing and stretching and like dry and all these things. So for me, I like to do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I found it to be like a really nice form of self-care. What I have been using and I've been like mixing it up a bit, so I would say the Derma E Vitamin E Cream is so nice. I wish it was a bigger tub. <laughs> I wish that they had a huge tub. Um, because I go through so many of those. I'm out right now and I need to order more, but I love that. I also love the vitamin E oil as well. So I was using those two together a lot. Also, my sister-in-law, she's just the best gift giver ever, I will say. She got me the belly oil from Hatch, which is like luxurious. It's definitely a splurge, but I freaking love that stuff. It smells good, the consistency is so nice, it's not overly greasy, I feel like it sinks into my skin good so that I'm not just like walking around like a big grease ball. It like actually sinks into my skin. It's been like a really fun like part of my night routine is just like do my little belly cream, belly oil kind of thing. So I would say if you're looking for some, those three are great. And of course cruelty free and vegan because why would we not? Why would we buy something to test on animals in 2022? It's just, it's not the business. So the next thing is something that we actually got off of our baby registry, and that is the Hatch sound machine. Um, so everybody told me to get this. Every every mom, every auntie, every like person who knew a pregnant person was like, get the Hatch sound machine, it's the best thing ever. 
So that was like one of the first things off of our registry to come in, which was so exciting. And I, of course, couldn't wait. I had to open it and test it out. And I was like, we should just start using it because we might as well get into the mode for when the baby gets here. So we started using it every single night and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> like it's for babies, but like they also make one for adults. So if you're not like pregnant, I think that one's like a little bit more like aesthetically pleasing for an adult bedroom. Um, whereas this one's like changes colors and it's like very much for a baby to get recognized the difference between night and day. But I definitely recommend it. We have it on the rain setting at night and then birds chirping in the morning. And I will say, I hate the birds chirping in the morning, but I think that's just because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> but the rain at night is so soothing. We both love rain. It's like, we always feel so cozy when it's raining. So that's been like the best. So if you are going to get that for your baby, I say go ahead and get it now because you will use it for yourself and you will love it. It is literally just so nice. I, you know, I started using it to be like, oh, well, I should get used to sleeping with this because when the baby gets here, they're gonna be sleeping to this. So, you know, just a little bit less of a disruption in our routine because our routine will be disrupted quite a bit. Definitely recommend getting that, um, some sort of like sound machine. I mean, I'm sure we were, we were using Alexa before meditation sounds at night and stuff. So, I mean, there's other things that you can do, but I think if you're gonna get that for your baby, then you might as well just get it for yourself and enjoy it. And then the last thing I would say has been like a great must have during pregnancy is the belly band. And I actually didn't really need this until recently. So I would say don't get it until you're like in your third trimester. I just ordered one off of Amazon. I don't know if it's like the best one out there or anything. You'll find that as your belly gets bigger, it's a lot of pressure down there. And sometimes it just feels like really heavy and you just kind of want to be like lifted. The belly bands are nice because it just kind of feels like you have two hands like kind of holding up your belly a little bit. It just relieves like a little bit of the pressure. So if you're someone who walks around a lot or you're on your feet a lot, I definitely recommend getting one of those. And I think that's pretty much it. If I forgot anything, I will definitely leave that in the description box down below so you can definitely check that out and use my links um if any of this was helpful for you give this video a thumbs up let me know your pregnancy must-haves in the comments down below so that other people watching this video can get some ideas and we can all help each other out would love to know and i will see you guys next time in another video bye